Someone recommended in the comments of one of my videos recently that I go ahead and check out this abandoned mail wagon located in Cumberland Forest. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that because I have nothing better to do than to seek out an abandoned mail wagon and read everyone's post because that's just the kind of guy that I am. So to find this abandoned mail wagon, you're going to want to head to this location in the northern end of Cumberland Forest, just a little ways southwest of Fort Wallace. For reference, that is northeast of Valentine. When you arrive, you will notice a small US mail wagon left abandoned at the side of the road. There is no sign of its driver, and there's no sign of the horse that pulled it. As you can see, it seems to be carrying a few letters, and there are a few out in prates on the ground next to it. Most of these letters cannot be interacted with, and therefore cannot be read. So unfortunately, this mail reading trip is going to be a lot shorter than we would have expected, considering there are so many more letters than the ones that we can read. However, sitting at the door of the wagon is a lockbox in Inside you can find five letters that can be read, so let's do just that. The first letter is a letter addressed to a judge, and it reads as follows. Judge Finley, dear sir, your honour, you will pardon me for addressing you, however I am very ill, so much so that I am not in a condition to attend my trial. If it would please your honour, I would like you to send me to the poor farm and send me my release. I am the unfortunate victim of the morphine habit. Judge your honour, you have discharged me on more than one occasion, and by doing so have exhibited great kindness. If you do so again, I promise I will go away and be a good girl in the future. Yours obediently. Gertrude Eastwell. Dirty Gertie. Doing all the morphine. <laughs> the next letter is addressed to a Henrietta Douglas and reads as follows. From New York City to Henrietta Douglas, Tumbleweed. Miss Douglas, it is with great sadness I write to inform you of the death of your husband. You may have read in the newspapers about the tragic fire that occurred at the Whiteham Hotel here. As residents gathered to watch the St. Ignatius Day Parade, a few people began to cry out as smoke emerged from windows on the second floor of the hotel. Within 30 minutes, the entire building was engulfed in flames, and those on the upper floors were trapped. Your husband's body was recovered the next day amidst the rubble. We are working with the local coroner to prepare his body for shipment to you. Please write back at this address on the envelope. With sincere sorrow, Jacob Sears. So a resident of Tumbleweed's husband passed away, but the letter didn't get to her, so she probably still doesn't know. Wounded. The third letter is addressed to Miriam Wegner. My dearest Miriam, I decided that I would write to you again because even though our worlds seem so far apart these days, I think of you often. New York is crowded and dirty, but so alive. It feels like anything is possible, even for a country girl like me. And my biggest news is that I have been cast in a Henrik Ibsen play. It is a small role, but now I can finally call myself a Broadway actress. Sometimes I do miss home though. The peace and the clean air, being able to take a ride at first light. I received a letter from Lily Miller a while back, and it appears that she is experiencing some financial difficulties. She was always very sensible with money, so I am worried that that weasel Cooper has his claws in her again. She also mentioned that she has not seen you leave the house in months. I cannot even begin to imagine how painful it must have been for you to lose Joshua in such a horrible way, and I would never assume to instruct you on how to grieve, but I worry about you existing in such isolation. This must be the sixth letter I have sent to you with no response. Please let me know that you are alright even if it is just the shortest of notes to tell me to mind my own business, you can tell me anything. Your loving cousin, Annabelle. P.S. Uncle Eugene, with the greatest of respect, if you are withholding my mail from Miriam, or dare I say constraining her in any other way, I beg you to reconsider your actions. I know how much you love her, but please do not confuse love with possession. She is a beautiful, intelligent woman with so much life ahead of her. Jesus Christ, that letter is a mouthful. The next letter is addressed to the St. Denis Times Tribune. It reads as follows. Dear Sir, it has come to my attention that the habit of writing letters to newspapers has completely consumed my life. All I do all day is think about what I'm going to say that is witty, pithy, and will impress people. I do not know. I never used to care about being pithy. Now, it is consuming my life. My once successful career as a fertilizer salesman is now but a distant memory. My life is now dominated by what others think of me. My vanity, pride, and self-absorption have become everything to me. Yet I never used to be this way. On the eve of a new century, I pray that mankind will emerge fresh into a better world, one less consumed by the poses, pretensions, and images that have obsessed him in the 19th century. I have many hopes for our species, but few for myself. Please destroy any future letters I send you without opening them. I am turning over a new leaf. Life as a seller of chemical fertilizer is far more fulfilling than this shadow of a life as a man who exists merely through the eyes of others. Yours faithfully, 
Dorian Weatherby. P.S. I note that in your last issue you misspelt my name. So this fella seems addicted to writing into newspapers. Fascinating. That is truly the winner of the most unusual addiction of the year. Which I know because he's probably the only guy who wrote in for that category in 1899. And the last letter is addressed to a William Errington. It reads as follows. Dear William, how aggrieved I find myself to write your address on this letter. Not so long ago, I would have inscribed your residence as the finest college in the finest university in all of England. Now, well, what is this preposterous place? I am ashamed to even write its silly little name. Your gushing correspondence has not moved me so much as an inch. You write of great skies, beautiful lands, hard-working fellow citizens, and your own firm resolve. Had not England skies? Is the land of your birth not also beautiful? If you were lacking in hard work, I could have remedied your predicament quite easily, and done so without sundering our family in this appalling way. Your mother still believes you are touring Italy. If you do not reply to this letter with assurances that you intend to come back, I shall tell her your return ship was lost at sea with all hands. That, son, is my own firm resolve. Do not test it. Your loving father. Since this mail wagon was abandoned, I suppose that means that that guy is now dead to his family back in England. But based on what that letter says, it doesn't seem as if that's such a bad thing. Hang on a minute. Back off, you greasy bounty hunters. This mail wagon is mine. And those are all the letters that you can read on this abandoned US mail wagon. This highlights one of the many ways that this game provides extra flesh to the open world of Red Dead Redemption 2. By giving us ideas of characters that occupy it that we will never meet physically. Or maybe we did, but we'd never know it. These letters and other letters that you can find in other places truly are a huge reason as to why the open world of Red Dead Redemption 2 feels so alive. Unfortunately, however, they're all that you can really find at this location that's worth taking a look at. It's probably worth noting that one of the wheels on the wagon seems to be broken off, but there's no indication as to where the driver went, or the horse for that matter. And so on that note, this video shall end. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super appreciated. And I will of course see you all very soon with another video at some point.